During the making of this video, the operators of various mines allowed the staging of certain conditions which may at first appear to be unsafe and not according to certain federal, state, and or company safety procedures. These scenes were created strictly to demonstrate the differences between correct and incorrect safety and work procedures in the mining environment. They in no way are a true reflection of the condition or operation of the mine shown in this video production. Hello, welcome to another in our exciting mine safety video series. In the last 10 years, at least 39 miners have drowned at work. Florida miners, where a majority of our open pit mines are filled with water, counted for seven of the 39. Most of these drownings occurred as a result of equipment going into the pit. If you're like most of us, who can't walk on water, you might want to pay close attention to this video. Our topic today is safety around the water in the mining environment. What we will discuss with you today could save your life. We're going to discuss with you some simple, inexpensive perspective equipment and techniques which could have probably saved these 39 miners. We will discuss the suspender type flotation, personal flotation device, or PFD, versus the traditional type. And we will explain how spare air in the equipment cab can provide the operator with air if the equipment goes into the pit. David Johnson, an experienced dive instructor, We'll discuss some basic safety procedures which could save your life if you suddenly find yourself in or under the water. Look at that water. It's only water, right? You work around it every day. What's the big deal? Well, if you're not a fish or an alligator, it's a big deal when you fall in the water with your work clothes on. He said he was trying to crank the motor and fell out of the boat. Did you see what happened? Yes, sir, I did. What happened? He was in the boat. He was cranking up the boat. Can you point to where you last saw him? He was right there at the end of the dock. It's diver one. What have you found? Copy, you have one victim. Bring victim to shore. <laughs> Those clothes are going to soak up water like a sponge and you're going to take on extra weight in a hurry. You may be headed for sudden death by drowning. Today in this training session, we want to offer you some safety tips on how to work and dress properly. That is, by wearing a personal flotation device, fall protection where required, and a seat belt in mobile equipment around water and all other locations in the mining environment. There are so many reasons that we work around water in the mining environment, they are almost too numerous to mention. For the safety of powered haulage operators and even miners on foot, you're required to use mobile equipment to build berms or earthen embankments around the edges of travelways adjacent to the water. Haul trucks have to transport materials from stockpiles back to crushers or conveyors. Track hose scale loose materials from the face in open pit water filled mines. They also load haul trucks. Drag lines scoop materials up and bring them to stockpiles along the water's edge. In all of these situations, you must wear seat belts while operating a front end loader, haul truck, track hoe, drag line, or any other piece of mobile equipment adjacent to water or elsewhere for that matter. Additionally, you need to guide mobile equipment perpendicular to the water. When operating mobile equipment near water, exercise extreme caution. Miners are called upon to install lines that carry fines and sands to recycling and reclamation ponds. 
Adjustments have to be made to valves and flow rates at spillways leading from one body of water to the next. Pumps and floating pump stations have to be installed and maintained. Of course, dredges and dredge lines have to be assembled on lakes, and later dredge lines have to be maintained and repaired. Dredge cutter heads have to be replaced. In these situations, wearing personal flotation devices are a must, and your first line of defense against drowning if you should fall in the water. In mines that use clarifiers and wet processing vessels, miners must install and then maintain this equipment during normal mine operation. Use of fall protection devices including full body harness, shock absorbing lanyard, and proper tie off to anchorages are a must in these situations. <laughs> So why do miners and contractors drown in the very water they work around? Let's examine some of the reasons and then some of the methods to help you work safely around water. There must be countless reasons why miners consciously choose not to wear a personal flotation device. Some of the more popular ones might be, it's too tight, it's too hot, it makes it too hard to reach out and turn a wrench or use a heavy tool. Hey, I've left the PFD behind. It'll only take a minute to do the job. I'm not going back and get it because I could be finished in the time it takes to make the trip. All of these reasons will fade away in the blink of an eye if you fall off a dredge, pump platform, spillway walkway, or other area into the water with your work clothes on. There are traditional designs, and then there are new personal flotation devices. I called my local supplier and asked them for a recommendation and they recommended to me the new, at that time on the market, inflatable, auto inflatable PFD. I purchased these PFDs and issued them to all the workers on the job site. Uh, much to my surprise, we had 100% instant acceptance from all the workers and we were in 100 percent compliance with wearing our PFDs on the work site. The new style auto inflatable PFD as you can see is is so brief. You can work in this, you can operate a piece of equipment, sit in a seat all day and it does not hamper your your, your ability to move around, not as with the, the bulk of a standard issue PFD. Uh, it's been wonderfully accepted and, and we get compliance and people don't mind wearing it all day. Whether you wear a conventional one or a newer one like inflatable suspenders, we're suggesting in this training program always wear your personal flotation device when there is a danger from falling into water as stated in 30 CFR part 56.15020. Remember this, a personal flotation device left behind in a truck toolbox, on the seat of a truck, on the dock, a platform, or anywhere else. If it's left behind, it's useless to you when you fall in the water and are not wearing it. You work around water every day and you get used to the routine. You can turn that bulldozer, track hole, drag line, or front end loader on a dime. Besides, you're the operator and you know the limits of the equipment, right? Maybe you don't know the limits as well as you think you do if you get too close to the face of a wet mine and the equipment rolls in the water with you in the operator's cab. Always wear a seat belt when operating mobile equipment. Look for surface cracks that run from the edge of the face and water inland that indicate unstable ground. Stay as far away from those cracks and unstable ground as is possible. Always follow established company guidelines on distances from the edge of the water. You've been working on a dredge for years. You could walk every single inch of that deck blindfolded. You've climbed all over the dredge under every imaginable condition. All of that may be true, but it doesn't take but one slip of your foot on a tool that's been left in a walkway to trip and fall in the water. Use handrails when walking anywhere on the dredge. 
pick up tools after you use them, and wear a personal flotation device. It's nighttime. You've been down this mine road hundreds of times. You've got to go out and check an electrical portable power station, or maybe a flow line that's being laid to transport and reclaim materials. All of a sudden, your headlights drop below your feet and start to go out of sight. Unknowingly, you have driven into an open entrenchment dug on the afternoon before your shift, and it leads directly to the lake for the dredge. Your truck rolls into the water because of darkness, reduced visibility, and you're not having checked with other miners on workplace examination and working conditions prior to going out on your shift. Check with other miners about workplace conditions before heading down the road. With an in-the-cab check or a tailgate meeting, talk about changing ground conditions and other hazards before traveling out on your work shift. Know where you are? and where the water and hazards are at all times. It's raining or it's foggy. Visibility is reduced on travelways to and from the plant and around water. Slow down, drive cautiously. If you are unsure of where you are day or night, slow down and verify where you're going before driving right into the water. There are many reasons equipment winds up in the water that isn't supposed to be there with the operator in the cab. And here are a couple of them. First, a pickup truck or a work truck is driven into standing water either on a road or off the roadway. Looking at the water, the operator thought he'd just drive right through shallow water and be right on his way. He guessed wrong. Instead, the water filled a washout that was as deep as the truck was high and serious trouble followed as the truck sank into the water. Be like these two miners who got out of their truck, observed the water on a travelway, decided not to drive through the water, and instead drove around it to be safe rather than sorry. Along the edges of lakes and wet mines, front-end loaders move raw materials from stockpiles to conveyors or crushers. Often, stockpiles have been placed very near the face and edge of the water by drag lines. The operator of the front end loader attempts to scoop up materials as he drives too close to the water's edge, and in goes the loader. A drag line operator continuously positions his piece of equipment along the face of the wet mine and must lower and raise the bucket from the water to collect and bring out materials to stockpiles. There is a danger of undercutting the face with the bucket and the drag line. Unfortunately, the operator often ignores company guidelines for distance from the water and face, gets too close to the edge of the face, and the drag line falls in the water. If you operate equipment of any kind and it falls into the water with you in the cab, Diving expert David Johnson has these guidelines to help you cope and escape. First, we'd like for him to remain calm and keep the seat belt on to the cab or to the tractor or piece of equipment quits moving. You need to keep the belt on to keep from being tossed around like a pretzel inside the cab. Second, the spare air, if you're mounted inside the cabin, once it stopped moving, can reach up, get his spare air. You want to breathe all the air in the cabin till it equalizes with pressure. You can take the spare air then, put it in your mouth, open the cabin door, release your seat belt, and follow your smallest bubbles to the surface. Remember, continue breathing, never hold your breath while using anything compressed air. Air inside a cabin, once the water pressure pushes it, is compressed. So remember, breathe normal, exhale continuously as you come up. Third, what if he'll save his energy and wait till the water pressure equalizes inside the cabin? The door will open easy. If you try to open it, you're pushing against several tons of pressure that most humans cannot move. So be calm, be patient, let it equalize with pressure, then open your door and uh, swim towards the surface. Fourth, feel your face for the direction of air bubbles that are released 
and swim in the direction of those air bubbles to the surface of the water. The bubbles will always go to the surface. As you exhale, you follow those smallest bubbles up. If you exhale, you will see bubbles going and you'll, they'll follow right up your face. If you're trying to swim down and the bubbles go in the other direction, you know you're going the wrong way. In our training session today, we've established that there are many reasons for working around water. That fact isn't going to change in mining. We're going to have to work around water. We've reviewed the reasons that miners fall in the water and drown while on the job. Whether it's no personal flotation device, carelessness, overconfidence, or reduced visibility, the results can be the same serious injury or drowning and loss of life. Wear that personal flotation device at all times when there is a danger of falling in the water. Exercise extreme caution when operating heavy equipment near water. Take extra precautions when driving a vehicle or working around water in reduced visibility of night, rain, or fog. Don't drive any vehicle through what you believe to be shallow water without checking the depth of the water first. If you do for any reason find yourself in the cab of a vehicle going into the water, then follow the four steps for escape and recovery. In the past three years, some 100 persons have drowned in the U.S. who were trespassing or were improperly on mine property that was closed. Perhaps the most important safety advice of all for those persons would be to stay out and stay alive. Would you rather use a personal flotation device or a body bag? The choice is yours. Until our next exciting mind safety training video, work safe.